Hi there, good evening and welcome to St Andrew's Reflections for Tuesday the 21st of April. I want you to think back to uh, Easter Day if you can and if you heard me speak on Easter Day. Um, one of the things I mentioned was uh, a video that I was uh, aiming to watch or suggested you ought to watch, um, which was uh, this one, The Passion, um, a BBC production from over 10 years ago, and one I would highly recommend. Uh, it includes actors such as James Nesbitt, Joseph Maul, um, Penelope Wilton, uh, and Ben Daniels, and it's a very good representation of the last week. It begins with the Passover and Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. It's through the wonderful characters that uh, that are used, it uh, takes a good look at the politics and the religion and how they mix in the midst of the excitement, the fear, the hope um, of all that's going on in that week in Jerusalem. And for me particularly, picking up on the longing for ordinariness, or ordinariness uh, of the Jewish leaders, of them wanting, in the midst of the excitement of Passover, everything to go normally, um, to be very ordinary. And maybe that's something we long for at the moment, a sense of longing for ordinariness uh, in the midst of all that's going on. Um, but I do recommend that, it, it, this program. It appears, it's in uh, four episodes, and it's produced by the BBC. Uh, and uh, you might still be able to get it through the Bible Society, um, but it is well worth watching. And it does come with some study material uh, from the Bible Society as well. At the time when the when the series came out, um, paper newspaper reviews said this of it: the Easter story goes real time, and it's brilliant. There's a vitality and realness to the whole thing that you rarely find with this story. That's from the Guardian. Some of you might say, "Well, what do they know?" But hey. Um, in the Daily Express, uh, there was it was a quote saying, "A lavish enterprise, a serious attempt to set the passion story in a convincing historical context." Um, that was from the Daily Express. Perhaps more relevant from uh, the Bishop uh, Wright, uh, from uh, the Bishop who was then the Bishop of Durham. A gripping portrayal of Jesus, full of insight. I hope it will stimulate high quality teaching and learning within our schools and churches. And indeed it has done uh, over the years since it was produced. So I do recommend it. The reason I'm turning back to it and encouraging you to, to look at again at it now is because I think I said a few weeks ago that I was going to be watching it with my family and we did. We watched uh, the episodes during uh, Holy Week um, leading up to Good Friday and then watched the Good Friday episode and then the episode for Easter Day. Now, without wanting to put too many spoilers on the story, um, sorry if this is spoiling the ending for you, uh, but one of the things I particularly like about the way it's portrayed is that after the resurrection, the first couple of times that Jesus appears to people, to, to women and to disciples, it's not the same actor. It's played by somebody who looks different and for me, that really, when I remember when I first saw it, um, gave me a real insight into why the disciples couldn't recognize Jesus uh, when they saw him uh, after the resurrection. And maybe there's something there for us to hang on to, that things, that Jesus looked different. And in that, there's a whole symbolism of of that things were different and things were going to be different and things were going to change. I'm talking with, with friends at church um, and colleagues about how eventually when we start coming out of uh, the, the, the restrictions that are placed on us now in terms of having to stay at home and doing things very differently, that we will be doing things differently. Uh, and I came across a letter that came out from the Archbishops of York and uh, Canterbury when the coronavirus sort of first showed its head in mid-March. 
Uh, and one of the things they said in the, the letter that they sent out to the, their uh, Church of England churches was this. Uh, we urge you, sisters and brothers, to become a different sort of church in these coming months, hopeful and rooted in offering prayer and praise and overflowing in service in the world. Uh, and they also said being a part of the Church of England is going to look very different in the days ahead. Things are going to be different and will continue to be different for all churches, Christians, people of all faiths and none in the days and weeks ahead. But for us as being part of a church, or if you're not part of a church and you're watching this uh, in your own faith, things will, will be different uh, as each new day is different. But uh, things will be different as we move on through time and we grow out of this experience. And that takes me back to that recognition of when those disciples first saw Jesus in that post-resurrection light. He was different. They didn't recognise things as being different, as him being different to start with. But things had changed. Things had moved on. He wasn't the same. But there was life and there was new life. Let me take you back to the Gospel reading for last Sunday. And it's from John chapter 20. I'm going to read from verse 19 to 29. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. For Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, who had not been with them when Jesus came, had been told by the other disciples, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. And see my hands. Reach out and put your hand in my side. Do not doubt but believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet who have come to believe. Things will be different. Things will feel different. As we move on, as we grow out of this time, let us, like Thomas, exclaim, my Lord and my God, and recognise things for what they are. Alive and full of hope and full of new possibilities for the future. Sometimes for some of us at this moment that may seem difficult. But as we read in John's Gospel, blessed are those who have not seen yet who have come to believe. Let that be our prayer for each and every one of us as we come to find God in new ways, in faith and in hope. Let me share a prayer with you based on one that appeared in this week's resources from Roots Worship and Learning uh, magazine. Let us pray. When the disciples met in a locked room, Lord, you came and stood among them and you said, Peace be with you. They were filled with joy and rejoiced. You breathed on them and they received the Holy Spirit. 
Thomas doubted as he wasn't there. A week later, you appeared again and again you said, Peace be with you. Thomas touched your hands and felt your side and exclaimed, My Lord and my God. You are our Lord and our God. As we grow, as we feel the difference in our lives and around us and between us, between our neighbours, between our family, between ourselves and you, our Lord, may we grow into a new way of living. May we recognise and celebrate being different as we move on. Peace be with you. Amen. Amen. God bless.